All right, we have officially, or we're about to wrap this season of Jersey. We are now into the reunion, and it was wild. There were wild accusations that were flying. Um, But so far, no limbs and no fists. So I have the Brav Bros here to help me kick off our recap for this week's Real Housewives of New Jersey reunion. I hope you're ready for it. Let's dive in, shall we? Oh, hi, it's me, Zach Peter, pop culture junkie. Reality TV insider, published author, and host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast. Here I'll bring you all the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, and unfiltered combos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest tea. Now, let's dive in. And dive in, we shall. Here to help me recap this week's episode of Jersey, I got Steel from the Bra Bros. What's up, everybody? You Glad are. to be here. How are you feeling about this season of Jersey now that it's coming to a wrap? Are you excited for it to be done? Or are you like, we're going to dive into more in the reunion? Uh, I'm excited for the reunion. I think that I'm hoping this is what we've all been waiting for, kind of like the climax of the Teresa Melissa thing. I feel like we've been waiting for that and saying that at every reunion, but this one feels different just because we do know that they still have not talked since and that they're having issues with filming the show because of this. So I'm excited for the reunion. The season overall was fine. I, I Shooter and I talked about it when we recorded last night. I'm ready for all of these shows right now to wrap up. I'm too emotionally invested. I'm exhausted. Like, I think it's taking years off of my life. (laughs) So I just need a break. (laughs) No shit. I feel you on that one. Um, So we have Colleen from New York. Colleen, I hope you got your tickets to see us live at City Winery NYC, July 26. Tickets are selling fast. Like I I think tickets are selling faster for New York than they were for Philly. And Philly sold out. So guys, if you want to see me, Steel Shooter, and some very special guests live at City Winery NYC, it's the main City Winery. We're not doing like Rockefeller Center, all right? We're doing City Winery NYC. Get your tickets July City Winery. The City Winery, yes. And we have, I mean, listen, last time we had Dorinda Medley. We had Chris Bassett. I have Lala Kent that's going to be at my show on June 15th here in LA. So get your tickets at nofilterlive.com. If you're in New York or just in that tri-state area, get your tickets now. Get your meet and greet packages now because they're going fast. Yeah, don't wait. We're not just making it up. Yeah, we're going. They're they're selling significantly faster than Philly, which is Really interesting because it's like neutral turf. Neither of us are from New York. I have a lot of friends in New York, but they don't watch Bravo. So it's all genuine people just wanting to come out and watch us. So if you guys want to see us live, you have to buy tickets sooner than later because it is selling quick. This is not a marketing ploy. This is like actually happening. They are actually selling fast. And you have a, a recap that you're doing live tonight in Philly, right? Yeah, we are going, or it's a a watch party. We're hosting or the special guests for a watch party at Barstool Sansom downtown. So if you're from Philly or in the Philly area and you want to come watch part two of VPR, I'm sure it's going to be a lively setting. Uh, We're excited for it. We've never done anything like this. It's our first time. So if you want to come hang out with us, Barstool Sansom, the show starts at nine. We'll be there, I think, at like seven or 7.30. I think we might even record like a little pre VPR episode where we're going to be asking questions to some of the fans. So come on out, hang out with us. Barstool Sansom tonight. There you go. Barstool Sansom tonight in Philly. Okay. Let's talk joy Z. Let's, let's bring out the inner Patterson in you. Um, are you, how are you feeling after this reunion? We had part one, lots of, of drama already between Teresa and Melissa. They came in hot, ready to just like, claw each other's eyes out i figured they would it's a lot of pent-up emotion they've always been like that so it's not like it's new i just think that they both actually reached a breaking point so i think this is going to be i hope it gets more raw than it is right now right now it's just a lot of interrupting one another and Teresa saying pretty much nothing but continuing to talk she just says things and it doesn't make any sense whatsoever but she came in real bitter this reunion like real just like 
like like Melissa came in because like Andy opens in and he's like, do we feel like we're going to get some resolution? And Teresa's like, I'm just ready to be done with it. And Melissa's like, well, I'm hoping we can like be done with it, but like and bring some peace to it. Bring yeah, end it with motion. peace, which is yeah. ironic because Teresa does this bullshit namaste thing before the thing starts. And I'm like, y- y- you lasted for five seconds before you started barking. So like namaste my ass. Like <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And can we just say Louis hasn't come out yet, but just the previews that we have for the next two parts, Louis looks so creepy. And the things that he's saying were, where Joe's like, I know everything. And he's like, I know everything. Like it's so like twisted. And it like actually makes me scared for Teresa. But it's sociopathic behavior i i can't get a read on him and i don't think you're supposed to be able to get reads on people like that unless you are like that but the more that we see him talk the more that we hear about things that he has done in the past like the fact that he is calling marge's son at work i 100 percent believe that happened without a doubt like you've had weird interactions with louis yourself so Anything that I'm hearing about him when it comes to like he called this guy or he called here, he's saying this, I believe all of it. None of it's out of the realm of possibility for me. Yeah. Because I, this guy is unhinged. Like he's fucking certifiable. And if you are a tree stump, which is my new permanent, pet, <laughs> if you are a tree stump, you should be worried about your girl. We talk about this every time we do these recaps. You should be concerned that yeah. she's married or is married to this man. He doesn't seem like a good guy. Mm-hmm. The fact that Bo Deedle had to come out and say, like, no, I'm not part of this. And Bo Deedle's a fucking scumbag and he doesn't want to be a part of Louis's whole narrative. It's just I I'm tired of Louis. I want Louis to go away. Shooter loves him on TV. He hates him as a person, but he thinks he's entertaining. I just want him gone. He scares the shit out of me. He scares me for the sake of Teresa. It scares me because I feel like that's going to go south and we're probably, if she stays on television, we're probably going to watch that continue to get bad for her. Um, so that's the my, that's my only hesitation with continuing to see them on TV together. Is It just it doesn't look positive. And I don't want to watch that. Positively. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't want to watch an actually like scary and potentially emotionally abusive relationship on TV. I don't want to see that. I don't think that's entertaining. I don't think that that's a peek behind the blinds that we all need to see. And if it does happen, if we do see him kind of go down this path, I hope somebody like actually steps in. Like that's not reality TV. That's dangerous. And that's a very different topic. And I don't want even for tree stumps, like you shouldn't want to watch that either. You no, should be rooting for your girl. Defending him, like that's the right. Like, they're on Twitter, like being like Melissa and Joe are crazy. It's like it's oh fine. Don't like Melissa and Joe. I'm not asking yeah. you to like Melissa and Joe. I'm asking you to take your delusional heads out of your butts and realize this does not look like a good guy. And then people are like, well, Joe J- Joe Gorka is not a good guy either. It's like stop comparing it because it's a very different situation. We've Extremely. never seen Joe Gorga exhibit the behavior that we've seen Louis exhibit in the the few seasons that we've had Louis, we've only had him for what, two seasons. And we've seen six different shades of Louis. Like we see a different guy all the time, but when you get a peek behind the mask, when you see him finally snap in his moments, that's him. That's the guy yeah. that you need to look out for because that's his actual true self. When he is yeah. trying to manipulate Teresa and no, we're not, you know, psychologists or anything like that, but we watch yeah. enough of these shows to understand like what he does when he talks to Teresa, he uses emotionally charged words. He uses big words. He uses long drawn out word salad sentences to kind of twist this narrative. And he points her in directions that he wants her to go. He told her at the party when they were at the the Irish party at Polly's, he's like, you can't be happy when they're here. Like he's telling her when she can and can't yeah. be happy. And she hears that and goes, Oh, he's looking out for me. But what he's actually doing is planting a seed yeah. where he's like, you can't be happy because they're here. And she's like, oh, I can't. I'm not happy right now because my brother's here. Instead of maybe being able to look yeah. past it or it's just you watch what he does. If you pay attention to the word choice, if you pay attention to how he goes about things with the theatrics, with the dramatic nature yeah. of it all, that's a pointed narcissistic behavior that you need to be on the lookout for. Because if you do 100 percent stand with Teresa then you need to see that she's in a bad spot. Whether you agree with Joe and Melissa or not, that's completely irrelevant. And that's what tree stumps need to get out of their own fucking way and understand that. This is not about Joe and Melissa. This is about Teresa in a really bad spot from outsider point of view looking in. I don't know how you can twist it to make it seem like this is a love bubble and not a prison. 
Yeah, I mean, it just, the more I see him on television, the worse it gets. And again, we really tried to give him the benefit of the doubt early on. And for a while. Yeah. Yeah, like, somebody saying Louis love bombed Teresa with that pineapple business. Teresa wanted someone to love and trust her so much more than Joe was hot for Melissa. Yeah, and I also think Teresa really does have those Italian roots where loyalty, like, I will die for my partner. You know, I will mm-hmm. die for my man. I'm loyal to the end. We see how loyal she was with Joe Judice, despite everything that he put her through. But so I think that in her head, she is happy because there is a... a, a an element of love bombing that Louis is doing and making her happy. And then there are also these little, like you said, planting of the seeds to make her think how to feel. And it's just making her more codependent on him. Exactly. So that, he, she, so that she doesn't even realize that she's being manipulated. She just thinks that she's being happy. And so she's going to continue to chase the happy by continuing to try to please him. And so when he starts to change and, and maybe not give her that same love bombing, she's going to do whatever she can to try and please him again so that she can go back to that happy love bubble place. And that's how they manipulate you. 100%. And she thrives in that environment. She just wants to be wanted. She wants to be cared for. She wants to have a family, especially Louis taking advantage of the situation because she is desperate for that family connection, especially since her parents passed away. Yeah. Whether she goes about it the right way or not, you know that the lack of relationship with her brother, her last standing family member is definitely eats her up inside. There's no way it doesn't. So. Louis knows that and Louis using that to his advantage because now he's implanting himself here where he can be like, I'm your family. You don't need them. And this is why. And he's going to just throw hints. He's not going to tell her flat out, but he's going to give her hints. This is why. See, that's your brother being your brother. He doesn't want you to be happy. He doesn't love you. I love you. I'll take care of you. I got you. I'm going to pull you out of the snake pit. When I see you in a snake pit, I'm going to pull you out of the snake pit. He paints this picture that even if Joe and Melissa were trying to do right by them, I don't think that they would have the chance to because they'd spin it louis would spin it to where Teresa now sees it as a negative oh they're just trying to manipulate you Teresa. don't trust them i feel like no matter what they do they're up shit's creek without a paddle yeah and then it's interesting because then we get more into the dina and dave stuff and melissa makes it clear that joe gorga bringing up that dave had a falling out with louis that's business related that he what do you say it was pizzagate 2.0 yep you know, she's like, he shouldn't have said that. That was a private conversation that he had with Dave and Dave wants no part of the show. So I did like that Melissa immediately shut that conversation down. Um, Teresa kind of seemed to sugarcoat it and say that, like, it had nothing to do with, you know, business. She's like, uh, Dave and Louie never had a business dealing together. And from what it sounded like, it's because it fell apart and it never came to fruition, um, which right. is why she can say with full confidence that they never had a business together. But I think, you know, Dina not going to the wedding and then Dina not wanting to be part of the bridal festivities sounds like maybe it's a little more than just not wanting to be around the camera because Andy made a good point of saying then just don't sign a release. Right. That's that's it. And the fact that I don't think they'd have an issue with being a silhouette in the background with their face blurred out. Like, I don't think anybody would have a problem with that, especially if they're friends with them. They're going to show up to the wedding, especially for a person like Teresa, where family is everything. And if you're inviting them to the wedding, I'm assuming it's like part of your chosen family because you like to use that phrase all the time. So, yeah, by them not showing up makes a massive statement of where they stand. And again, no matter what's going on, it's going to get twisted and turned. I guarantee This is the hard part with Teresa. I think she believes it. I think she believes everything Louis tells her. Like, oh, it wasn't a bad business deal. And they just didn't want to be on camera. Like, okay, sure. And I think that it's easy to manipulate her because she wants to be in that place where everything's okay. Everything's good all the time. She refuses to look at it any other direction because it fucks with her love bubble. And she doesn't want the love bubble to get popped because she's happy being wanted. And that's all we're seeing right now. So she's going to believe Louie when he tells her, oh, no, we never did business together. Like, oh, it fell through because of them. All they do. And again, we tried to give Louie the benefit of the doubt for so long. But yeah. all they do when they talk and bring up evidence is push me further, Joe and Melissa. I'm like, well, now Joe and Melissa's story makes a whole lot more sense coming from Pizzagate. Like, it makes more sense to me now because Louie seems a lot shadier than we thought in the beginning. Yeah. More and more stuff keeps coming out that kind of gives Joe and Melissa proof. And that's what Shooter and I said a while ago, where it's like, shut up, and Louis will bury himself. And I think Melissa actually commented on it and said, oh, my God, I told Joe the same thing, which is funny. But you see it happening. If you give him time, 
he's going to keep burying himself. He's going to keep yeah. just give him enough rope. He's going to hang himself. And they need to just let that happen because we're watching it happen in real time. Every time something new comes out about Louis, it's more and more damning. This guy is like so close to the edge that I'm just waiting for something to really come out. Yeah. And they, Teresa keeps trying to rewrite history because then we get into how, you know, before Louis, Teresa was hanging out with, with Joe and Melissa and they would go to dinner a lot. And Teresa was like, they never invited me to dinner. And then Melissa shows all the pictures. And there were more pictures that were posted on social media that shows Teresa with Joe and Melissa. And they're at multiple different spots, multiple different days, multiple different dinner outings i've seen at least four or five photos so for Teresa to say they've never done that or she must have invited herself all four or five of those times and you know that they didn't have a photo every single time no even if they were four or five times that's still enough to to know that like that's a mistruth you know it's making an effort it's it's some kind of effort in which even if it was like no i don't believe that she invited herself but even if she did like the door was clearly open enough where she was comfortable like oh i'm gonna tag along like it wasn't her like pulling teeth to go to dinner. You don't, that doesn't make any sense, but again, it keeps poking holes. And for her, all she did the whole time was just throw out baseless claims. Like she just, even when she wasn't the one being addressed, she just throws out things like, Oh, Melissa did that. It's like, what do you shut up? Stop talking right now. But in that moment, that's what seemed like such a small thing of just like, Oh, you know, you lied about going to dinner. And then she immediately is like, Oh, I must've invited myself. I'm like, I don't believe a word that comes out of your mouth. Everything that you're saying must be a lie. And the fact that people can stand by and watch that reunion, regardless of whose team you're on, even if you're team Teresa, how can you watch that reunion and be like, Oh, she's on the up and up. She seems legit. Like it blows my mind. Yeah. But you hear Go ahead. She's circling the drain. She's, and this is the hard thing when you have the OGs on for so long. And I feel like this is even what happened with like Vicky Gumbleson on OC is it's like they, their ego gets too big and they overshoot their mark and then they continue to circle the drain. And yes, they're always going to have those die hard loyal fans that'll ride for them. And that's what makes them so delusional to think that they're yeah. not wrong and to not have any self reflection is because they have all the stupid tree stumps that are like, yeah, Teresa's so good. Screw Melissa. And it's like, okay, like, Let's, you know, take your thumb out of your ass and actually like think about this for a second because just, yeah. she's not doing herself any favors on this show. If you could just logically break it down, just like take the emotion out of it because one, you don't know these yeah. people. Like you don't know them. So take the emotion out of it. Teresa doesn't know who you are. She doesn't care either. So take the emotion away from it and look at it pragmatically. Like really yeah. break it down. What has she brought in the reunion that is worth listening to? Nothing this episode. and Nothing. Well, the the other thing that I found interesting is she then accuses Joe Gorga of being the one to want to bring Louie onto the show, which one tells us that, yes, when Melissa's saying that we were all hanging out and we did like Louie at the beginning, that's true if Joe Gorga had this influence over Louie to want to join the show, number one. So that's another flaw in Teresa's story. But then if you remember when... Teresa first brought Louis on the show. It was a date night. It was not last season, but the season before. It was what in the season finale when yep. it was a date night with Teresa and and Louis. No Joe Gorga, no Melissa Gorga. It was just Joe. It was just Louis and Teresa, and it was filmed, I believe, after the finale was filmed. So it was a separate scene that was filmed all on its own that they edited into the finale of that season with just the two of them on a date to show that Teresa is happy and in love. When I heard. Melissa say that he originally wanted to date Alexia I was like that 100% tracks that makes a lot of sense to me and I'm not saying he settled for Teresa but this guy clearly saw an avenue that he wanted to pursue I don't know what his end game with it all is I definitely believe he was sitting with Joe like let's fly out there and get on the show right now let's go do it right now like I could see him saying all these things that's the difference is like When Teresa makes claims and says, Joe and Melissa did this, Joe and Melissa did that. I'm like, I mean, maybe, maybe. But when they say things about Louis, I'm like, oh, I've seen evidence. I've seen him do things in the past that tells me this probably happened in some way, shape or form. Could it be embellished? Sure. But is there a basic truth to what they're saying? Probably because you look at his actions. We're all about like face value here at the Brav Bros. That's what we like to do is like. What we get on the screen is what we're going to break down. We're not going to bring up past things. We're going to, what we have in the moment, like that's what we're going to look at. And if you just watch his behavior, there is a pattern. You pick up on patterns with these people and you can start to figure out, okay, 
if you hear a false truth or if you hear something that might have some merit, you can kind of break it down because of their previous actions in that season. We watch Louis get backed into a corner time and time again, shoots himself in the foot. Teresa tries to defend him, but it's like, what's your evidence? Where's the proof? I need proof. And they never have any. No. Well, here's the interesting thing. We have somebody in the live chat, love and live. Love when they they talk about love and live and light. Um, said, yeah, let's not act like Melissa and Joe never lied. We always go back to the deflection, right? We always try to take the attention off of Teresa and Louie and be like, well, Melissa and Joe are just as bad. Maybe they are. Maybe they're even worse. However, what's being exhibited right in front of us is is alarming. That's all. Like, that's the perfect example from who was it? Love and live. We're not talking about Joe and Melissa. We're not saying that they are clean and everything. We're not saying they haven't had some nefarious acts behind the scene, pulled some strings, tried to get on the show a certain way. We're not commenting on it. We're saying, how can you look at Louis and Teresa's whole thing and not see a bunch of red flags, a bunch of smoke and mirrors, a bunch of questionable behavior from yeah. both sides? Because Teresa and like, it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Joe and Melissa at least have owned some of their shit. A little maybe bit, yeah, not, sure. Maybe not a lot, but they've owned some. Whereas Teresa will not own anything. Teresa and Louie have zero accountability. And that's what makes my eyebrows roll up. You know, that's where I'm like, hmm. Because it's like they when you can't take any accountability, especially when you're lying, saying I never hung out with them and we never went to dinner. And then there are three photos that show up on the screen that show that they went to dinner. Like that to me then seems questionable. Correct. That's all. It's like, look at the evidence. Look what's being presented. Look where they get caught in lies. And you can see a pattern. That's it. Take the Joe and Melissa away from it. Stop yeah. thinking about them and think about Louie and Teresa alone. And tell me you don't see a lot of weird behavior from both of them. Her trying to defend it without being able to. That's what really gets me is that yeah. if you look at what Teresa tries to do when she comes to his defense or her defense, there's no evidentiary support. There's no stories to back it up. There's no other people that are involved where they can be like, oh, yeah, I know that. It's a claim made by Louis, mouthed by Teresa to the audience and the people on the cast. That is the line of questioning. There's nobody yeah. else that comes out, even in socials, even behind the scenes, even in the offseason. No one's coming out to come to their defense. But we do see people come to Joe and Melissa's defense, and we do see pictures. Give me a picture. A picture is a great way. Yeah, we invited you to dinner. One, two, three, four. Here's four times we did. That's evidence. You give me evidence, I'm going to believe that side, especially when you're just getting a bunch of whistleblowing from Teresa and from Louis with zero basis behind it. And when I don't get any evidence after 15 episodes and a reunion, yeah. I'm not going to believe anything that comes out of your mouth. And watching Teresa just like squirm this whole episode. She's not saying anything of substance. So for you tree stumps, if you watch Teresa, I'm being serious here. If you watch Teresa during this reunion and you can say, oh, she's in the right. Oh, she's doing a good job. I think you really need to take the emotion away and look at her, like really look at what's happening on the screen because it's so obvious to a lot of people. And it's not a like, I can't say it enough. And I've probably said it too many times already. This is not a Joe and Melissa issue. This is a Teresa and a Louis issue, and you need to recognize that, please. Yeah. Whew. Then we get in. Then we get into the most delusional moment of the reunion, which is the tail end, which is when Teresa says that she no longer believes that Caroline Manzo put her in prison, and now she believes that it was Melissa that put her in prison because of all of the stuff that she claims she heard from Jacqueline Larita, who she literally hated. Four months ago, literally yep. wanted nothing to do with Jacqueline. And then all of a sudden makes up with Jacqueline and suddenly has her own arsenal of tea that she wants to bring up on Joe and Melissa, accusing them of now being the ones to have put her behind prison. And I can't stress it enough. Nobody put Teresa and Joe in prison aside from Joe and Teresa. That's Joe all, Judice yeah. and Teresa Judice broke the law and they appeared before a judge and a judge said, go to prison. Don't pass That's go go to prison, clink, clink, serve your time because you broke the law. I love that defense. It's my favorite defense is when people are like, well, Joe ratted her out, blah, blah, blah. And like, look, is there a code? Sure. Like, I understand that there's a code where you shouldn't do things like that. Obviously, I'm not going to rat my brother out and send him to jail. But at the same time, it's fairly black and white. If you break the law and you get caught, you're going to go to jail. They broke the law. 
they got caught. They went to jail. So for people to die on this hill of Joe ratted her out, it's like, well, don't break the law, dumbass, and then you won't go to jail. I can't believe that people want to die on that hill where they're defending felons for being felons. It's like, that's how delusional it gets. It's like, how can you say that? And then their defense is, well, Joe does sketchy shit. It's like, okay, show us. Is, does he have lawsuits? Yeah, like, when, okay. yeah, when he's in prison, then you can yeah. talk. Right. He hasn't gone to jail. Again, we hear that he has sketchy dealings in his construction business, yet we haven't seen anything come to fruition where he's had to make like a massive payout. We haven't seen anything come to fruition where he's getting sued or indicted or for some major deal. So until that happens, mm -hmm. that is a ridiculous way to argue when the other two have officially been in jail, like yeah. jail, jail, they real jail, served, yeah, <laughs> prison, federal prison. Yeah. They've served their time. Everything we hear about Joe, Joe Gorga are rumors and speculation that have all. yet to materialize. Correct. Oh, so and so said this, and multiple people are saying, oh, "Great!" Until it materializes, and until there's a lawsuit that proves with receipts and documents that show that he really did all of this, or until he gets locked up behind bars, you have no merit. You have nothing no. to stand on. And they're like, "Just you wait. Just you wait." Eric is going to prison. So, like, fuck off. Like, when it happens, then you have a, a leg to stand on. But until then, you're standing on a tree stump and you look stupid. <laughs> That's well said. Well said. But I do want to talk real quick um, because I thought it was it's a scene from next week. Yeah. But I want to talk about it now a little bit. We see... I love Danielle. I think Danielle is the future. I think she's going to be great for this show. I love yeah. that she's starting to get like a backbone. She's starting to stand up for herself more. I she's think her brother her. is going to join the show. I bet you anything they're going to wrap up the Gorga and Teresa stuff. I know. That's and then what I, I think, think too. they're going to pivot it over to Danielle because Danielle revealed in this part of the reunion that this is her brother's favorite show. So I think yeah. it's going to be a Teresa and Melissa part two. Um, I hate that. I hate that part. And I think that's how they're going to transition Jersey into the future because that model's already worked. And now it's just a new family and new family drama that we get to get caught up in. Yeah, I do think that that's the direction it's going, unfortunately. And we, I think we made that call on one of these like yeah. months ago. I think that that was broached. I think we're getting more and more of a setup to go that direction, which is, I think it's a terrible, terrible way to go about it. But whatever. I, I Hopefully it works better. Hopefully it's not as tragic or whatever the fuck we're watching now but i liked when they bring up the fact that do you not know that like they set you up that this rumor was given to you and presented to you in a certain way so that you would be put in a position to do what you had to do without knowing that they were moving chess pieces that jen and Teresa were trying to move you and to do that and bring it up to melissa because we find out I guess Melissa had already, or sorry, Jen had already talked to Melissa about this rumor. So there was no need for that scene. But when you see Jen talking to Danielle, she's like, oh, no, don't say anything. She's just setting up her chess pieces. Yeah. And for Danielle in that moment to be like, wait, I didn't know that. I like that. And I hope that we get her standing up and kind of branching out from Teresa and Jen. I don't need her on a team. I think Danielle can stand alone. Fuda is so far up Marge's ass. She's team Marge forever, I think. But I would love to see a standalone Danielle that can look at both sides and be like, oh, Marge is sketchy. Teresa set me up. I think with Danielle and Fuda making up at the reunion, because we finally had Andy be like, we're talking about the same thing over and over and over. This is a stupid fight. You talked about it all season. And then we bring in Dolores to kind of be the voice of reason. And so Dolores gets them to be like, they just have to move on. Like, we just need to stop talking about this. And the fact that they both were willing to move on, I think they will be able to both take us into the future of Jersey um, and give Danielle a bit more time to shine outside of Melissa and, or sorry, outside of Teresa and Jen um, because I do think they set her up and I think when the fact that we found out that Jen had already told Melissa about the rumor shows that her delivering this information to Danielle on camera was clearly a setup because once it's said on camera it's going to come out and Danielle knows that and so she's like let me be the one to deliver this information to Melissa and what a great time let's go do it at the finale no, I agree completely. And I do think that I like Fuda for TV. I think that she's good. I like the fact that she came into the show ready to play the game right out of the gate. Like she didn't waste any time on picking a side, stirring up the shit, standing her ground a little bit. I, I think she is actually afraid to take on Danielle head to head. I think that's why she leans more towards Marge and Melissa to kind of pick up the slack there. But 
if we can see a union of those two, I do think that's a strong, strong alliance. And I do think that they'd be great for TV. I also think that they have the capability. And I haven't said this about newbies on any other show. I think Danielle and Fuda have the capability to help carry this into the next generation of yeah. Real Housewives of New Jersey. And I think that's rare to actually find those two. I think it's crucial for the show that they do actually have a truce and are able to move forward. I don't think that we'll ever see them as like besties, yeah. but I think if they can have a level of respect for one another, that's a different story. And I think that we maybe can get that, but I do think that they can carry the show and I want them to lean into that versus leaning into Danielle's brother. Yeah, I do think that I think we will get Danielle's brother. Um, I I'm pretty sure Danielle's brother will join the show and we'll probably do it behind her back the way Joe and Melissa joined Jersey. Um, but I, I agree. I don't think that that will be something that they milk for too long. If Fuda and Danielle can really kind of find a way to anchor the show moving forward. Cause think about it, Dolores is done. Dolores doesn't want to do the show anymore. She has Polly. She's happy. She's in a good place. She doesn't care to fight. She doesn't care to get messy or scrappy or anything anymore. She's good. She's happy. Teresa's time on the show is done. I don't see how she's they bring her back next season. Like as I, I, the more I watch her, the more I see this reunion, she's burying herself even further. And there's no way I can see Teresa coming back next season i was watching this show i watched it right before uh we recorded this um and i was my wife's upstairs working and i was texting her during it and i was like teresa's dead like this is the end of teresa she there's yeah. no coming back from this season and this performance on the reunion and i don't know how you can defend what she's bringing to the show overall because it's really nothing like she hasn't done much all season she seemed checked out she seemed like she was phoning it in yeah at the reunion she doesn't bring anything and like it's kind of a repeat behavior like she's always kind of erratic at the reunion but this was just I, I don't want to say desperate but it was just i don't understand what she's trying to do and i don't think she gives a shit honestly i think she's done but i also don't get then why is she coming in being like bye melissa i'm so glad i never have to see you again like you're off the show and i'm staying on the show like the level pride of the that's just pride, pride. That's yeah. Her, yeah she can she would never accept the fact that she would get ousted first i don't think that like i would love i would love to watch the fallout if she gets the boot i don't think I, I don't know if they can do that because she is Teresa Judice and has been for so long. They, they, they're they're going to give her. A, they did it to Vicky. True. They did it to Nini. They didn't do it to. Ba they did it to Ramona. That's true. I, I mean, they don't give a shit about the OGs. If the OG doesn't work for the show anymore, they're cut. They did well, it to I, all the OGs. Everyone has said that you know Melissa doesn't have a storyline without Teresa, but it's vice versa as well. And actually from the performance I've seen out of Melissa this season from her performance at the reunion as well. I think she deserves a season without Teresa, without Teresa. To see what they can do, you know, at least then we, yep. if she can't bring anything, then, then we cut them, but we haven't seen what they can do no. on their own without Teresa because they always get lumped into Teresa's drama. Yeah, exactly. And without that, I think we would get more. I think you'd have to have more and they'd have to find something to do. But like you just said, if then if they flounder after that, that's a different story. Now you could have a different discussion. But I think and I enjoy like scenes of Joe and Melissa's family and like Joe and Melissa when they're not the rare times they're not talking about Teresa. Like it's it's decent TV. It's not terrible. Like I think that there's something more there. And I think at the very least, they deserve the chance to show it. And if they can't see you later. But Teresa at this point, like I said it last year when we we started our podcast and like we started recapping Jersey, I was like, I don't really care about Teresa last season. This season's even worse. And she doesn't give two shits. She could care less. So if they give her a spinoff, if they don't give her a spinoff, I don't really care. I just don't want to watch her again. I can't, I yeah. can't do another season like this. I, I just I simply cannot. Give her a spinoff and let it do what it's going to do and let them watch her or not watch her or whatever. But I think Jersey's done. And I think from what we've seen in Bravo history, look at what they did to Lisa Vanderpump. Look at what they did yep. to Nini. Look at what they did to, you know, 
Ramona, they realized they screwed up and had to bring her back for this upcoming Ultimate Girls trip because at least Ramona, people enjoyed watching her in that setting and on that show. And she doesn't have the diehard fans that I think like Teresa has that are more delusional and will just blindly support her. But Lisa Vanderpump had those same fans. And look at what happened with Lisa. All her other shows, minus Vanderpump Rules, which she does not carry. Lisa is not the anchor on Vanderpump Rules. It may be her name and she may have started the show, but all of our other shows have bombed. Vanderpump Dogs on Peacock bombed. The dog hosting show that she did for NBC bombed. Overserved with LVP on E bombed. None of those were successful. None of them were able to sustain numbers that were actually, you know, worth a second season. So, no. you know, it's I don't think that the network will be loyal to Teresa if Teresa doesn't give the network a reason to keep her. I, I agree. And I don't think she has. And that's the funny thing. And I think that what they're going to do is lean on the fact that their wedding got like 970,000 viewers or something like that. So it was like it did better than a lot of the episodes in the season did. But the reviews of that episode were not good. But the people that I it's talked all about, about Joe and Melissa, I know. And people. Yeah. And the fact that Jen brought it up, like, it's a whole different thing. But the people that talked about it, like in the comments, everything that we posted that people responded to, it's like, yeah, that episode sucked. Like, that's not good television. And like, I don't I think what you do with Joe or sorry, with Louis and Teresa is you give them a six episode thing on Peacock. Yeah. See how it does. It's not going to do well. Let them fade off into the distance, like on their own terms and just let them go away. Check in with her every once in a while. Bring her on for an ultimate girls trip or something yeah. like that, maybe. But like, get her out. She's done. She's done. I don't think she cares anymore. The yeah. only reason she's still fighting is because she can't lose to Melissa. That's yeah. the only reason she still gives any shits. Yeah. Melissa, I think, will still be able to stay on Jersey. Like you said, give her one more season. Teresa, on the other hand, I don't think we should do a family show about Teresa and Louie. I think we should do some sort of um, business cooking show you know like they open up a pizzeria Teresa and Louie because then we can keep it cute we can keep it campy they don't have to dive deep into their relationship we can see Teresa in her cooking mode which is where I think she really shines and, and we can see bits of the family elements and then we can keep it six episodes on Peacock and it's something that doesn't need to be lasting long right it, no. even if it does one season that's an uh, one season enough with a light enough topic for them to keep Teresa looking good and then to let her sail off into the sunset on a good note right because think, the more yeah. we keep her in the drama setting the more she's going to continue to put another nail in her coffin I, yeah I think that's the best way to do it it's like she thinks that she wins and she would 100% take that as a W be like, Oh, I got my own spinoff. See, Melissa never got her own spinoff. And then she would lean on that forever. And then she would probably say like, and then I decided to end the show. And now we're just happy living in our love bubble. And then we're going to hear in like five years, they're having a horrible divorce because something terrible is going to happen. But I hope, and I don't wish negative things on anybody. I hope that there's some kind of saving grace there since they are married. Like I don't wish ill will on Teresa. I'm worried about Teresa, like yeah. watching this, for anybody that's been in like not a great relationship, you see red flags from the guy, but he has all of them. Like I, I'm sure everybody in this chat that's watching this, that's listening to this can like at least pick out moments that Louis doing something like, Ooh, I've had an experience like that and recognize like, Oh, that's dangerous. And then when you see 15 of those things in one episode, it's alarming. So to your point, no, I don't need to see a family show with them because I don't want to, dive deeper into it because it scares the shit out of me yeah and i think by keeping it light keeping it fresh just giving them a six episode even if it's like a honeymoon episode where you just like travel with louis and Teresa to like italy or something stupid and she goes from like yeah. tuscany to venice and like cooks with random people do that don't give me any more diving into their home because it makes me uncomfortable and it's stuff that like breaches the wall of like what like good tv good reality tv into alarming and dangerous tv and stuff yeah. that we don't really need to watch in my opinion yeah some people keep referencing Teresa's uh, YouTube show or her YouTube channel where she does cooking videos that I think she does really well in and she really shines in that area because she loves food and you see the kids come in and out of the kitchen that I think is really good and that's why I say give her one of two based off of what you said, I think one of two concepts could really work. It's Teresa and Louie explore Italy, 
same way J- uh, Jackson Brittany took Kentucky, right? Teresa right. and Louie take Italy. They explore all the little pockets. Teresa goes to her hometown. She learns more. Bro- I know we got a little bit of that in some of the earlier seasons with Joe Judice, but I think Teresa and Louie going and drinking wine and eating pasta and cooking and exploring different parts of Italy is different. It keeps it light. It keeps it fun. And we don't get heavy drama from it. Or it's something like we're going to open up a local pizza shop, a local pasta restaurant here in New Jersey, take her to Patterson, I don't care, and let her build that business and let them, you know, let it be like a candy in the gang, or maybe not candy in the gang, because that was mostly about their employees. And I think this could be about Teresa and Louie, like Tori and Dean in love. Remember when Tori and Dean opened up their little inn, their bread Mm -hmm. and their, uh, bed and breakfast and then we kind of got to see them running their bed and breakfast even if it was an italian bed and breakfast that louis and Teresa open up in the burbs cute something like that i think is the only way that that could actually work for them to have a spinoff that maybe has some legs um and if it does great and if it doesn't then i think it's fine i think the the biggest part of that for those two for louis and Teresa, you can save their image whatever image they have left whatever fan base yeah. they still have yep by giving a light hearted show where there's no drama you don't have to see the red flags from louis you can yep. save the image and you can let her kind of end her stint on bravo gracefully and i think right. that that would be the best scenario for the fans the people that watch the show because tree stumps are going to be an absolute nightmare if she gets kicked off the show without any kind of back end plan and, and i don't want to deal way- with that and it's a great way to fire her. And then they can be like, they didn't right. fire her. They gave her her own show. And I yes. guess, like, yeah, yeah, you know what? Whatever will get you to shut up. You know, yeah, wink. Like, wink, wink. Yeah, she got her Teresa own show. Would, she was Teresa would believe that and Louie would feed it. Yeah, they would. So. And, and the tree stumps would be so stupid that they would be like, yeah, she was better than Jersey. She has her own show now. Yeah, she's on a five episode awful. Peacock shit show. Yeah, and they're like, she left Melissa on Jersey because Jersey was circling the drain anyway. It was so toxic, I couldn't even watch it anymore. So it's a good thing that Teresa got out and she got her own show. Yep, that that's it. I can see that comment now. I can see it on our page, and then it ends with the bra bros suck. <laughs> like, yeah. You suck. Ugh. See, it's exhausting, man. It's fucking exhausting talking about these people because, like, again, when I watch the show... I don't get this feeling when I see scenes of Joe and Melissa together alone. I'm just like, oh, okay, I'm watching TV. When I see yeah. Teresa and Louie together, I'm like, oh, fuck, like, get off my TV. I don't want to watch this anymore. I don't like it. It's not fun. It's not entertaining. It's it's dangerous. It's alarming. Joe and Melissa is at least just like, oh, okay, I'm watching an episode of t- like TV right now. When yeah. I'm watching Teresa and Louie, I can't enjoy it. I haven't enjoyed it all year. Ever since he slipped up at the pool party down the shore, Mm-hmm. And the mask started to come off. I was like, e, that was weird. And yeah. then you saw more and more of it and more of it. Every episode, it gets worse and worse. It's like, they don't have a future here. They they buried themselves. Let them go. Give Joe and Melissa a chance. They've earned that, at least. Whether you agree with them or not. Like, you can't. There's no world in which you can kick Melissa and Teresa off in the same year. It's just, you can't do that. I think Jersey as a whole would flop because of it. You need one of them. Teresa hasn't earned it this season, whether she's been a mainstay for this long and an OG for this long or not. She hasn't earned the right to come back over Melissa and Joe. I think they put more into it. They've been more genuine, if you want to say that. It's just, it's time. It's time. And for Tree fans, they need to understand it's also time to give her her stupid spinoff. Whatever keeps her happy and not barking, just let it go. Yeah. I agree. (laughs) All right. Well, if you want more of our hot takes, you can come to our live show. Me, Steel, and Shooter are going to be live at City Winery in NYC. City Winery NYC, July 26th. You can get your tickets now at nofilterlive.com. Steel and Shooter will also be out live tonight in Philly. Mm -hmm. Give them the details, Steel. We will be at Barstool Sansom downtown. We're doing a VPR watch party. We are the special guests. We are doing, I've done like, air quotes a lot today but uh we are gonna do a little pre-show recording we're gonna ask some people some questions see how they're feeling about the episode and then we're just gonna watch and enjoy it with you guys people that listen to us frequently know that i throw notebooks a lot when i get emphatic about certain things so if you want to see that live potentially come to barstool's handsome it's gonna be a great time they got like a whole 
there we go. list of drinks. There's like pump teenies. There's uh, the Sandoval trash can. They're calling it. They have a, a, a was a Bambi eyed bitch like margarita or something. And they're serving goat cheese balls. So Love. it's the closest you can get to sir without being at sir. You can get angry with us. You can yell with us. You can enjoy it. I've never watched a TV show in this setting in my entire life. Um, I'm really excited. My little sister has just graduated college and she's coming out, which is going to be a lot of fun. My wife's coming and it's going to be a blast. So if you're not doing anything tonight, come on out, watch it with us. And then we can all watch it again tomorrow because you get the better uncut uncensored version on Peacock anyway. So let's just go be ridiculous tonight and blow the roof off the place. Yes, guys, go and support Steel and Shooter, the Brav Bros tonight in Philly um, and get ready because we're back on the road. NYC, we are coming July 26th. We do have some special guests lined up that we will be announcing soon. So get ready for that. You can come see me live June 15th for my Dirty 30 show um, with Lala Kent. I have some very surprised guests in store for that as well. So you can get your tickets at newfilterlive.com. And Steel, thanks for, for joining me to recap Jersey. We'll be back again next week to recap Jersey. Uh, we'll have last shoot. thing. Last thing. Because sometimes these videos get a lot of views. If you're watching this, subscribe to us yeah. as well. Like, Give us a little subscription because we had one video that did close to 100,000. And I was like, sweet, we're going to get so many new subscribers. And I think we got like 10. So subscribe to us too. We're fun. We're a good yeah. time. And the last thing is for all the people in the comments, there's no E at the end of steel. And it's totally fine. No one ever knows how to spell my name. It is arguably in bold on the screen right there, spelled correctly. But I'm not going to fault you for that right here. See that? That's that's how you spell it but it's okay i'm not mad it's just for future reference it, there's no e <laughs> s-t-e-e-l like the metal e-e-l no e like me z-a-c-k but people always spell it with an h regardless so yep see no it's okay jamie lee i'm not actually mad about it it's always funny people <laughs> never get my name right like anytime i introduce myself they're like oh steve i'm like no steel they're like stan steel Stu. yeah okay i'm Stu. there we go <laughs> well thank you Stu. thank you for joining me this week. happy to be here um, and we'll be back next week. So get ready, guys. We will see you. We'll see you all very soon. Uh, you can always keep up with me at Just Plain Zach all over the internet. Catch the podcast at No Filter with Zach on Instagram. Steel, where can they follow the Brav Bros? Follow us at Brav underscore bros on all socials and then Brav Bros podcast on YouTube. There we go. Go subscribe. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. Subscribe to their podcast. Leave them a good a good review, a good rating, because people like the tree stumps like to leave us mean reviews and mean ratings. Yeah, they and do. <laughs> we know that they're dumb. So go and give us some love, and we will see you guys live July 26th. City Winery. Yeah. Come support the Raw Bros tonight in Philly. And, yeah, we will talk to you guys soon. All right. Good night, guys. Bye.